Okay, so I've brought my creature in. I've played with an overlay layer that I'm calling my background overlay layer that is behind my creature. So you see what it's doing there. That helps set the creature off a little bit, the highlights. I can do the same thing above my creature. So I create a new blank layer and I say edit fill with 50% gray in front of my creature and I set that to overlay mode which doesn't do anything, but now it allows me to dodge and burn on top of it. And before I do that, I might do a slight levels adjustment. And just see, overall, with my creature now included in it, do I want it to go darker or lighter in levels? And I think I want it to maybe go just a tad lighter. But now because it's overlaying both the background and my creature, the uh, increased contrast I gave the background still helps the creature stand out. So you see how that works. Okay, also on this, I can do dodge and burn. I might start with dodge and bring out some of the highlights on my creature. Now this is primarily about the creature. So I can call this my creature overlay layer. I'm gonna mark it as gray. All my overlays are marked with gray. And because it's on its own layer, I can always play with its opacity as well if I feel like I'm overdoing it. Okay, now I've, I've uh, dodged it. I've hit some of the highlights. I'm gonna bring out his eyes. Her eyes, I'm not sure yet. Maybe this part of the trunk of the tusk. Bring that out a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to burn it. I'm just doing midtones, only midtones, and I'm going to take that foot down because there's no light really getting to it. I want to suggest the foot, but I don't want it super bright, right? So big difference there in lighting. And that's from the creature overlay layer. And I might want to burn some of the creature's texture and fur behind this coral so that that coral stands out a little bit better. And I might want to burn not just the midtones, but actually the highlights a little bit too just to dull the, the tips of the flowers and things. Or my creature is involved. So selective dodging and burning. Using those as tools. You want it to just feel like it's making an improvement each time. And if you overdo it, not only can you play with the opacity and kind of lessen the effect, and blend between them, which can really help in animation too. You can see how this could be like animated for underwater, the shifting light. Um, but you can also actually erase away from your overlay layer at low opacities with a big soft eraser. You know, 0% hardness, 10% opacity, and I can just take away a little bit of those effects in just subtle ways, right? So here, where I burned it and it got a little too saturated, I can just erase that area and tone it down. Okay. Next, I'm gonna save. What if I wanna mess with the foreground a little bit? Like these, these barrels, are pretty strong focal point for the landscape and they're interfering with maybe the eye getting up to my creature. It's kind of nicely camouflaged into it. So I can go on top of really any layer. I'm gonna go ahead and go on top of the barrel layer and make a new overlay layer. 
edit fill 50% gray, and I'm going to call this my foreground overlay. Or I'll call it, I guess, middle ground because it's behind the foreground. And you can do as many overlay layers as you like. As long as you set them to overlay mode and they're 50% gray, it doesn't affect anything. But as soon as you dodge and burn them, this is what's called non-destructive editing, which is very, very helpful. So I'm going to burn the highlights down first. And now I'm going to go for the midtones. And it's making them darker, but it's also making them a bit more saturated, right? Now, in order to play with the saturation, I need to go back to the actual layer of the barrels and then do an adjustment there. So I'm going to go to Hue Saturation. And I'm just going to take the saturation down a little bit. And I can try darkening them overall a little bit too. Just a tiny bit. And then I can see if all of that makes a difference. And it certainly does, right? Helps my eye get led to my creature much, much more effectively. Okay, lastly, this foreground coral is uh, competing with my creature quite a bit. So how can I just dampen it a little bit? Well, what I'm going to do is take this cloud fill, I like this one, and I'm going to select a big chunk of it like this. That's over the foreground. Oh, let's extend that. And I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. I'm going to push up its opacity, and I'm going to play with different blendings. Okay, then I'm going to transform it and warp it, and kind of shift this texture. It's like um, chum in the water or something. To be filtering through this foreground, so that this foreground isn't in such high focus anymore. Now remember, I could just use filter and Gaussian blur the foreground, but that would actually take away potential of those pixels. So it's better to do it this way. Um, so that works pretty well. That's pretty high opacity. So let's take that down a little bit. And now I want to play with the color of it. So I'm going to go to color balance and I can shift that in different ways. I'm going to make it a little bit warmer. Lesser. Maybe a little more toxic looking. And then of course I can also, with a very soft edged eraser at a low opacity, I can select where this cloud is seen most. So lots that can be done with texture overlay. And with uh, these gradient overlays. Computer just needs to catch up. Now, the last thing I might want to do, take that down a little bit. So these are just really subtle decisions, but each one should help, right? Now, the, what, the last thing I might want to do is find an image of bubbles, scuba bubbles. Let's do. because now I have a figurative element in my composition, so I can have things that I would expect to move, because my creature I expect to move. 
Why is Google taking so long? All right, images. I need something that looks like, yeah, a plume that the creature would breed. And I'm not too concerned with the size. But I might as well search for large. I don't want it to be stock footage, right? So that it doesn't have a watermark on it. And most of the large ones are, let's see. So let me use one of these. It's okay if it's a little softer. Because it's underwater anyway. So this one works. So let me drag and drop that in. Going to expand it. Come from the nostrils of my creature. I might even warp it. Now I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity, big and soft edged. It's too big. And erase around the hard edges. And then I'll use a blending mode to try to get it to sit in, just like it's a texture overlay. The softness of the eraser is what's key. Okay, so let's try soft light. Let's try pin light. There we go. Taking it down a little. Basically need to darken it a little. In its shadows, and then I need to desaturate it. So texture overlays are best when they actually don't have much color because then just the color will work that's around it. Okay. Now let's see. The effect that happens. And the bubbles are there. They kind of blend in with the other things I've done. I do normal and see what they're doing, and I can just erase a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's the one. All right. And I might even actually blur them a little bit. So make them stronger, but then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then play with how soft they are in this watery surface. Okay. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So now I need to save it. So first, of course, I save it as a PSD for myself. This is Creature, the Creaturescape. It's Assignment 3. Always have your name and your assignments. Then I need to save it as a JPEG that is fewer than 5 megabytes, just like you saved your first assignment. And that's going to be one of the things we put into PhotoBucket. And then I need to save it with all the um, overlay layers. 
say that is a JPEG, put that up. 